guys, it's Susie again from Wendy's. You know, Tuesdays my teenager volunteers at a horse barn, so here we are at the place that's available. In tonight's video, I'm excited to show you mastery paths for differentiation. I've often said that modules to me are the best part of Canvas. Well, mastery paths work inside modules, so see how that goes together? So stay tuned on how you can be a differentiation ninja and nobody even has to know about it. I'm recording this straight out of Canvas, so hopefully you can see everything, but let's talk about what a mastery path is. So basically, it's a choose your own adventure if you're a child of the 70s, 80s like me and used to read those books where, you know, you're walking out, you're reading the book peacefully and it says, if you want the princess to die, turn to page 36. If you want her to live forever, turn to page 42 and you'd get to kind of invent the story as you go. Well, you are the teacher and you get to invent different paths for your kids to travel through a module, but here's the deal, um, the score does the choosing. What are the benefits of a mastery path? Well, first of all, you set it once and you forget it. So there is some work on the back end, just like anything you make in Canvas, but students get the assignments automatically that they earn based on their pre-assessment scores. And I'm gonna talk about some ways to do that. We'll look at all the specifics and the mechanics. Number two, it's sneaky differentiation. So if your paths are similar enough, take about the same amount of time, which good, good differentiation should, students don't even know that they're on a certain path. It's you being a good teacher without them knowing how great of a teacher you are. <laughs> uh, number three, you get really good data, just like everywhere in Canvas. You start to see who's on what path, even though the score does the choosing. The mastery paths do keep track for you. And you get to work smarter, not harder. So I'm gonna teach you how you can even take one assignment and put it on multiple paths. I do also have a planning sheet available for you. Some things that you just want to think about. Now this is pretty, it's just a pretty basic Word document, but just some things to think about as you're planning your mastery path. Everybody's going to have to have a pre-assessment, but then you can decide how you want kids to travel down the high path, the middle path, or the low path. Now, of course, my friends, we don't call it that. <laughs> Sometimes when I've done training with teachers in person, they're like, I don't want to call it the low path. Well, this is for your records. You call it whatever you want to do. I used to say Form G for my uh, gifted or honors kids that were coming into my class and then Form R for everybody else. Whether that's tacky or not, I'm the only one who knew what it was. So basically, you're going to plan it out so that you know what path everybody's going down. You're going to go ahead and build the materials, and then you program the path, which we're going to get into in just a minute. But this is a Word document that I'm happy to share if you need it, but I don't even really think you need the document. Just look at what's my pre-assessment, and then what path do I want to have my kids go down? Now, the planning sheet I just showed you has three paths, which is like, you know, ninja level, <laughs> but maybe you just want, like I said, Form R, Form G, the digital version. Canvas does force you to use three paths, but you can assign the same the same content to the two high paths, the two low paths, however you want to do it. So um, that's just a hack. We haven't talked about how to build one yet. I'm just warming up the crowd here, so stay tuned. I try to share good resources and samples when I have them. In this case, I'm kind of proud of this example I have, <laughs> so if I can get that off the screen. Um, but anyway, I have a sample mastery path for you that I will make sure is on the commons. If it's not already at the time of this recording, I'll make sure it is. Um, but anyway, I walk through some 80s music trivia because I love music. If you can't tell that by all the interludes I do when things aren't working right <laughs> or all my song references. But I want you to see how it's set up from a teacher perspective, okay? So you see my pre-assessment is a quiz here. It's not a graded assignment, which is one of the options I told you you could use, okay? In my case, I'm training teachers, and so I wanted to make it fun. I had them do some 80s music trivia. And after they got a certain score on that trivia, it would unlock... A discussion okay again I'm doing sneaky differentiation so I wanted it to look like nobody got anything different you take the quiz you move on to the next assignment so everybody had a discussion and even those discussions look similar I'll show you in just a second and then after that um, it took two. it took one of my groups to the 80s music reward the high group but I also rickrolled them there so again love music and then um, the other two groups went to a study guide where they could find the answers to what I created and come back because then everybody ends on the same post-test. We don't have a moving target. You know, I have to teach the same standards, even though you might attack them a different way, uh, you know, as a student who needs more support or differentiated support, but we all have to come back to the same standard, same assessment, same post-test. So that's how it's set up. Everybody takes the same pre and post-test, but the supports throughout are different. So let me just walk you through quickly. Here is my actual quiz that they took. Okay, this is 80s music that I like. <laughs> And then if you got a good score, which a good score, I think I had set it to do like an 85 and above or something like that, 
they had a discussion about what song they loved, okay? But look, it's about the same length as when I go to this one for people who got like a medium level score, I called it meh. Look, the directions are almost exactly the same. If you were sit if you were sitting on a computer that was right next to this kid, you wouldn't know you had gotten something different. And then even the kid who got the lowest one, 80s music sadness, they got to tell me about a different decade. So you see how if even if you were again sitting right next to that kid, you would not know that yours was anything different. Okay, I'm being sneaky. The people who got the reward, I rickrolled them. <laughs> the people who needed to study, I sent them to the best list of the the I sent them to the list of best 80s music according to other people so they could find the answers they missed. And then everybody arrives on the post test, which is actually the same exact quiz. You have the power to do that. Same pre and post test is a good one good way to do instruction. You're the boss of you. So that's a tour of my sample mastery path. If you search Susie Lolly in the comments, you should find it. Okay, so without further ado, let's get right to it. And I apologize again for any background noise. I'm in a public place, so <laughs> can't control that. But you're going to first of all set up just a regular module because the module is going to be, I told you I love modules. The module is going to be what guides kids through each piece of what they need to do. But it's based on, again, that score, okay? So I'm in a sample mastery path that I'll walk through more in just a minute. Um, but you always want to start with some kind of an assessment. Now, this assessment can be like a quiz they take in Canvas, or you can also unlock a, a mastery path with an assignment where you tell it to, to count a certain grade. But for the demo of the video purposes, I'm going to start with an assessment. Now, I've already built this assessment because you don't want to watch me do that live on TV, <laughs> on TV, on YouTube. So I'm going to go in, and I'm just going to show you now how we um, program this assessment to say where we want the paths to go, Okay. So I'm in a quiz I've already built. I'm gonna go into edit mode. And you can do this, of course, as you go. And then you're gonna tap on the Mastery Paths tab, which is the third tab across the top. And what you wanna tell Canvas is you wanna say, okay, it's gonna give you three paths. There's no way to change that. But you wanna tell Canvas what your three paths are. So sometimes it depends on what the content is. I want this one to be the top group to be harder to get into. So I can say like 85 and above. And then down here I can say, okay, well, how about everybody who passes gets in the middle path, and then below that goes down to a zero, okay? And then these little plus signs are going to allow you to program what goes in the mastery path. So give me just a minute. So when I clicked that plus, it's going to take me into every item I've built in this course, but I've already put mine actually into an organized module, which is what you should do first. Before you do any programming, have everything listed there. So I, click, I pick the plus and I say, okay, what do I want the people who get this highest achievement level to receive in their module? Well, I want them to receive a pretest. So, and it's showing, I don't want to show all items. I want to show, <clears throat> well, that's okay. I'm going to do um, pretest. We already did pretest. Give me a minute while I remember what I called the stupid thing. <laughs> I remember they were all discussions, okay? So I'm going to program for the top group. I want them, they were 80s music love because they did really well. So I searched for discussions there. I also know that I had a page I wanted them to go to. So I'm going to go to pages now. Maybe it was an assignment. Y'all, I'm terrible. On While you're watching me, let me pause again. I'll find the next thing. Okay, the kids who did well got the music reward, and then I know for sure the last thing they got was a post test because everybody's going to get that one, okay? So I can check all my items even though I can't see them all necessarily on the same screen. I'm filtering. You can also search if you know the name. If I hadn't built mine a while ago, I would know. And I click add items. So this one is going to take them to 80s Music Love, which is a discussion you can see by the icon. Then it's going to take them to an assignment where they, they get a reward, but it's a it's actually a Rickroll. <laughs> You'll hear about that more in my next sec segment. And then they go to a post test, okay? Notice you can change the and, to, and or. If you need to even further customize, we won't get in the weeds with that tonight, but if you want them to be able to do some choice and voice and pick an assignment and then end up on the post test, whatever it is you wanna say, okay? Then I'm going to program the next one and I will not make you watch that, but let me get all these done. Okay, so all I did was, again, I built the module first, built the assignments that I knew I wanted kids to travel down and then I came to this Mastery Paths toggle to set it up. So I added three assignments for each of them. They all got a discussion, they all got an assignment, and then they all got a post test. Now again, mine's a silly topic, but that just shows you the basic structure of it. And these points are what I customized to tell what travel they are going, what path they are going to travel on. Okay, I'm going to save now my initial setup and then there's one more set of things you have to do. So that's why we put everything in a module so that they can navigate easily so that the mastery path works. 
but then also so that we can do this last step. So I'm gonna scroll down to, I've got a lot of scrolling to do here, but I'm gonna scroll to my sample mastery path and I need to go into each element. Now I've already done it here, but I'll just show you an easy way to do it. I go into each element like this one that has not been ranked yet. I click on it. It's gonna ask me for an assignment to whom I want to assign and I need to choose mastery paths, okay? So I come down and where it says assign to mastery paths, I would just choose that there. The default of course is everyone. And then I would be able to program that to where I want it to go, okay? When I save that, now when I go back to that module, it'll know who's supposed to receive that assignment. Now just a warning here is while I was in this assignment, I saw this second tab called Mastery Paths. If you tap Mastery Paths on this assignment, then it's like you're programming a whole new Mastery Path. I just programmed the first assignment in the module, okay? So I'm gonna save this. And remember, I don't want this assignment to be the trigger for a mastery path. That would be all crazy. What I want is for the, the 80s music trivia to be the initial, the initial mastery path. So let me get back there. A lot of scrolling, let me pause for you. So remember I said a quiz or a graded assignment can be the, anything you can grade can be the trigger for a new mastery path. But I don't have to touch it on any of these other items. I just want to program the first item that is my trigger for the mastery path, okay? So that's the last step. I first of all used my pre-assessment to set up the three tracks, what, tr what path my students should travel through those three paths. You'll see now it says mastery paths. And then I went back to each assignment and I said assign two mastery paths and I saved it. And that's how you actually make the thing work. So what your kids will see, I'll show you in just a minute. So I'll quickly finish with showing you the student view of the mastery path and this is exactly what it looks like. Until kids have unlocked the portal, the pathway, the choose your own adventure by taking this pre-assessment, everything else is locked. So they literally see this. Once they get a certain score, then the other items on their particular path populate. Okay, so I hope this has been helpful. I'd love for you to leave me a comment and let me know.
Hey guys, I put my heart into these videos, so I hope you loved it. I hope you've loved all of them, but if you haven't, then make sure you go back and watch the previous videos. I'm making playlists for you all the time. So if you're somebody who wants time savers, there's a playlist for that. If you wanna gamify, playlist for that. And all of my themes of my blog. So did you like it? Go ahead and click the thumb below. If you really liked it, I'd love if you shared it on your favorite social media channel. I'm at Suzy Lolly on Twitter. And then finally, my very favorite is if you subscribe. Subscribe to YouTube and subscribe on the blog. Take care.